Gaming on Linux. You hear about it all the time. You hear people saying that Linux isn't worth a flip to game on. It's not something that uh, you would pretty much want to do anything on other than Windows because Windows is still king. It's not the year of the Linux desktop, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to do a very comprehensive video on gaming on Linux. Now, to do this, I'm going to cover a lot of things. I'm not just going to say, hey, download this. Here's the games that are on it. Have fun. Gaming on Linux. What I mean by comprehensive is we're going to go over gaming on Linux, what the Steam Deck has brought to the Linux desktop, uh, what distribution I would use, and then we're going to cover a, a plethora of different uh, gaming systems you can play on it. I'm going to cover everything from Atari 2600 all the way up to Steam and running AAA Windows games right on Linux without a bunch of, a bunch of hoops to jump through. Because quite honestly, right now I'm running one of my favorite games in Steam, Windows only game. And with three clicks on my mouse, I was up and running with no problems at all. So really, when you talk about things, when you when you bring up gaming on Linux, you can do a search on it. Uh, it talks about Linux, Steam OS, Steam Deck gaming. Uh, Steam Deck has Linux on it, but you should still use Windows. And then you have some five reasons why Linux is good for gaming. Or gaming on Linux, all you need to know. Instead of just writing the words down, I want to go through it step by step. Show you how to. If you, you're somebody that's into retro games, we can knock those out. If you're somebody that's into uh, newer Windows games. Now, I do want to say this. That um, if you're playing newer type Windows games that require uh, EAC or BattleEye or Fair Play or anything that is a anti-cheat you can get them running on Linux. I know people that do. But there is an issue. Sometimes the servers don't play well with Linux and you will get banned. So usually what I tell people is, hey, if you're not if you're playing games that don't require anti-cheat of any kind, Windows games, you're not going to have any problems at all. And one of the main reasons the last three years has been really exciting for Linux gaming is the Steam Deck. There have been leaps and bounds made by it with the Proton and the Proton database that kind of helps you through everything and makes things real simple for you. So if you want to get information about the Steam Deck, you can. But today we're really just going to speak about Having a Linux unit, whether it be a desktop, whether it be a laptop, and being able to game on it. Now, the distribution that I'm using is Garuda. Now, before everybody screams and hollers and says, you know, why aren't you using uh, something with Fedora or why aren't you using uh, Nabara or something like that? The reason I use Garuda is I've tested many, many distributions out to see which one was the easiest plug and play. When I mean plug and play, it's if I want an emulator for this or I want an emulator for that, are they readily available without me having to do a lot of searching? And if I download Steam and want to play my Windows game, is it easy to do without having to jump through a lot of hoops? Garuda Gaming Edition was the simplest, hands down, out of all of them. Now, when I say Gaming Edition, if you go to download, let's let this speed up real quick, and then I'm going to show you what hardware I'm using because I'm doing this video in conjunction with Tuxedo Computers. They're a full sponsor of this video. And we're doing it on a Tuxedo laptop. And we're going to go over the specs of that laptop here shortly. Now, if you scroll down, you'll have downloads. you got the Garuda KDE Dragonized Edition. But if you go right next to it, you got the Dragonized Gaming Edition. That's the one I have on this laptop right now. That's the one I'm using. And that's the one we're going to do all of our testing on. Now, having said that, let me minimize this real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and go down here. And we're going to go ahead and make this full screen so you can see the specs that I have on it. Let's go ahead and make that up. We are actually using a Tuxedo Polaris Gen 4. Uh, it's got the AMD Ryzen 7. It does have onboard AMD Radeon 680 mobile graphics. But it also has an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 mobile. Now, the beauty of Tuxedo teaming up with eBuzz Central to do this gaming video is that uh, we got a big surprise. We got a big surprise for one of the viewers of this video. So keep watching and I'll tell you more about it later in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little smaller. And you can see we're using NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Mobile, not Linux friendly 
Everybody out there knows that it's not Linux friendly. You can get it working with either open source or proprietary drivers. Generally, you usually have to, you usually have to use proprietary drivers. But either way, it's working. And, I, and it's working for Steam. It's working for emulation. It's working for everything. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Now, first thing I want to bring up is we're going to go over here. And I'm going to look up Garuda. And you will see something pop up right here that says Garuda Gamer. Now, when you open this up, let's go ahead and make it full screen. You've got a lot of different emulators and gamer and games. Right out of the bat, I've got Steam Native and Steam Runtime installed. It comes that way out of the box. Wine, Bottles, Wine Tricks, Boxtron, Heroic Games Launcher, Lutris, Proton TE Custom, Mini Galaxy, Proton Tricks. And if you look down here, everything that's checkmarked is downloaded out of the box. It's already pre-installed. Proton Tricks and Proton GE are really, really important. You don't got to step through hoops. It's already installed. And it works well with NVIDIA. And then you can go over to games. And you do have a few games. I'll show you what comes downloaded out of the box with it. And then emulators. Okay. You've got different emulators here. You've got DOSBox over here. You've got WayDroid Emulation Station. But we'll get it to that here in a moment. What I want to do is go ahead and minimize that real quick. And let's go ahead and open this up. And we'll go down here to games. And these are the games that come with it. You've got Bomber, Bobo, Chromium, DOSBox, Go, uh, Go Overlay, Grand Tier, Kajong. you got Catman. You can make that bigger if you want to. And it's kind of a spin on Pac-Man. But it's fun. It can burn some time if you want it to. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go back to games. And these are just the ones. These are the little games that come with it out of the box. K-Bounce, K-Diamond, Kigo, Killbots, K-Jumping Cube. You've got a lot of your KDE type things. I believe there's a Mario type game. There's a Mario type game. That's Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. That is a Windows only game that I actually play on here on Steam. That'll be featured later on in the video. Minecraft Launcher, Mind Test. So you got a, a lot of little games. And I know people out there right now are going, those aren't real games. Get to the real games. We're going to get there, man. Calm down. Relax. Now, the first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and go back up here. And let's go ahead and put Garuda in. And we're going to go to Garuda Gamer. And I'm going to start with Atari 2600. Uh, now, you can use this with a controller if you choose. It is truly up to you, however you want to do it. Now, what I do want to cover real quick, let me go back over here to Firefox. Now, a lot of the emulators that I'm going to show you re re require ROMs to run. Now, what I do is I have a, a, a ripping thread that I have saved on retro game boards. And I will link this in the description below. That way you can kind of go over. And I've been following this one for a long time. But there's a lot of different things you can buy. And if you own the game outright, you can set it up on your computer, plug the game cartridge into these little circuit boards, and it will actually take the game that you own and turn it into a ROM. And then you can put it in a library and have it on your PC. So that way in the future, if something should happen, you still have the game that you bought, you own, and you still have a, a, your copy of it right there on your hard drive. It's pretty simple, but I'll put a, a lot of different ripping threads down there for you so you can kind of keep up. So that way, when you go out and you do buy a new cartridge game, you can plug it in and roll with it. Now, it's real easy. If you come over here, the first thing I'm going to cover is Atari 2600. Atari 2600, out of the box, you've got the Stella emulator. All you got to do is click on it, come down here and apply, and it will install it. Once it's installed, let me show you what you got to do here. Let's open this up. Go to games, and we'll go look for Stella. There's Stella. We'll open it up, and there it is right there. Now, the first thing you want to do is go into options. You can change emulation uh, if you want to. User interface. You've got different things you can look at here. I would leave that alone. Uh, snapshots. Input. This right here is where you would set like your controls. But this is where you go through and set like left, right, fire button. What I did is I set one button to be fire and reset. And then uh, used my, my controller stick, my left controller stick, 
as my controller. So, I mean, once you get in here, you can set this up however you want to. You just got to go through and set it up what you're comfortable with. And then come down here. I'm going to close that. And I do have some Atari games. I've actually got them saved as HC ROMs and ROMs. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and we will go by alphabet. I think the first one I'm going to try is, I think they got the old Pitfall. Yeah, there's Pitfall. Go ahead. And you know what? I want to go ahead and make that full screen. Hold on. I messed up there. Let's go ahead and come down here. Let's go ahead and open it back up. Options, video and audio. Uh, we'll go ahead and set for full screen. Click OK and close. Now we'll go back over here to my ROMs, which is Atari 2600. And we will go by alphabet. And then we will go to Pitfall. And there Pitfall opens up. Now my fire button or my jump button and my uh, reset button are the same button. I just hit it and then I can go running and I'm playing Pitfall, the Atari 2600 version, right here on my PC. Now I know this is just an Atari game, but like I said, I want to be comprehensive. I'm not just going to cover what's easy to cover. I want to cover everything that, for anybody out there that might be wanting to do something. And there you go. I died. That's horrible, isn't it? So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and back out of that. And we will go ahead and close this. Go to options. We'll go to video and audio. Take it off full screen. And we will close out of that. And that's how you would do something like Atari 2600. So the next thing we're going to cover is we're going to cover Super NES. Now, all you have to do is come up here. Let's go back to Garuda. There's Garuda Gamer. And we're going to go down here and we'll look through the emulators. And there's ZSNES. Let's go ahead and hit that. Click Apply. You'll have to put your password in, of course. Go ahead and open that up. And it will install it. Press Enter to exit. And then if we go back up top, I'm going to minimize that. We'll go back up top. We're going to go ahead and put in ZSNES. And there it is right there. And... We're going to go ahead and one time reminder, press space bar to proceed. Now you can come up here and you can configure this. Let's go to video and I'm going to try to set it up a little bigger because this is a uh, bigger screen. I'm just going to try 1280 by 1024 and we will set that. ZSNES will now attempt to change your video, press any key. Okay, that's fine. Now, what I'm going to do is come over here, or no, we got to config our input device, which is your controller. Now, this says keyboard or gamepad. Now, you can come down here, press enter key or button to use. I want to go up. Then, you're going to come over here and go down, left, right, then start button, select button, and then we will go with... Uh, a button, B, and then we will go X, Y, and then of course your left and right because you had those on the Super Nintendo controllers. Now we can go ahead and back out of that. Now I'm going to go over here and open a game. Let's go ahead and load, and I got it in downloads, I believe, and there's Super NES, and there's my Mario. Let's go ahead and open that. You will notice in some of the upcoming gameplay that the audio has been muted. I have done that to avoid copyright strikes. Nintendo is horrible about it, and they just don't want their music for their older games on the internet. So, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but the gameplay and audio, I assure you, works perfect on all the following titles.
going to go ahead and escape out of that. And we're going to go ahead and close that. And that was how you run Super NES on your Linux system. Now, the next system we're going to cover is Sega Genesis. I know a lot of people out there that ask me sometimes in my forums or on my comments, you know, how do you run Sega games on Linux? This one's pretty simple as well. I may have DGN already installed. Let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, what you'll want to do is click on that. Now, let me see. I thought I already had DGN downloaded. Let me go ahead and look it up. Okay, run DGN. So I do have it installed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of that. Now, you played this one a little different. Let me go over to my folder. And what I'm going to do is go to my downloads. And there's my Sega Genesis. And there's Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay. Once you click on Garuda Gamer, click on your DGEN, and click Apply, it will automatically install it. Once it's installed, you don't got to open it up or anything. You just go to where you have your game at. Let me close this. Right click. Open with. And then we're just going to put DGEN. Enter. And DGEN should automatically open. And there it is. Right there. get it back up on the screen now there are other options out there if you do want to run different emulators for sega genesis let's go ahead and open up the garuda gamer again let's get that opened up just like uh, z snes i like using z snes some people like using SNES 9X. That's really up to you. What I do is I, I just recommend you download it, find out what works for you, and then go from there. That's my personal opinion. If you've got a different route you want to go, that's definitely something you can take a look at. Now, another thing I'll have people ask me is you've got RetroArch up here that comes and in, 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 in kind of looks like an old PlayStation uh, user interface, and you can kind of set everything up through there. I'm not really a fan of that. It's something you can look at if you want to. It's not my big thing. I like picking each emulator, setting it up for my use, and going from there. Using it for the games that I want to play. So, what I'm going to do real quick is we're going to close out of that. And we have covered Sega Genesis. Now, I do want to go over something real quick. Because I know I'm going to have people come into my comments and try to put links to where you can download ROMs. I don't recommend it. One, it's illegal. Uh, two, you can get in trouble for doing it. And three, some people are going to do it anyway. If you do it, do it just for testing to make sure your emulator is working right. I always recommend you go buy the physical game and then buy the hardware that you can plug right into your computer. It's not expensive and download and make your own ROM off of a game you already own. So please, please do not put links in the comments below telling people where they can go to download ROMs. You will be instantly banned. I can't do that. Uh, everybody's got a search engine out there. If they want to search around and find some stuff that's out there free and get it, like on the Internet Archives, you can go there and you can get some uh, games on the Internet Archives. I'll put that link in the description below. But not a lot. But uh, just don't do that, please. I don't need any trouble from YouTube on my channel. Next, like I said, this is sponsored by Tuxedo Computers. They're working in conjunction with eBuzz Central to do this gaming video. And I was going to make a whole series, like one video, one video. I just decided I'm going to do it all at one sit down. That way you can sit down and pick out what ROMs you might want to try out or what uh, emulators you might want to try out. And of course, how to run Windows games on a Linux PC with little to no effort. It's that simple. I, I'm honest. Uh, especially when we get to Steam, it's real exciting the things you can do. So keep watching because I'm going to tell you here in a little bit uh, how Tuxedo Computers and Ebo Central is going to make uh, your day. It's going to be totally awesome. I'm so glad they did this. It is, it is very exciting. Okay, what we're going to cover now is PlayStation 2. An emulator that will let you run PlayStation 2 games. Now I do have people 
few and far between that'll ask me about original PlayStation, but mostly it's PS2. So this one's pretty simple. There's PCSX2. Just click on it. Go ahead and click apply. Go ahead and put your password in. Let's hit enter. And it'll go ahead and download everything you need. Press enter to exit. And you're good to go there. So let's zip on up here. Let's put in PCSX2. There's PlayStation 2 emulator. Just open that up. Let's go ahead and make that full screen. Choose your language. BIOS image. System language. And we will go ahead and click on Next. Now it's going to say BIOS directory. What you're going to want to do here, let's browse. Now, you need the piece, uh, PlayStation 2 BIOS to be able to run this. There's plenty of places online you can find it. I'm not going to link it. You can just go out and do a search for it. You can find it quite a few spots. What you'll want to do is download it in a place that's easy to find. Mine right now is at present is in downloads, PlayStation 2, and there's my BIOS. And I'm going to go ahead and choose. And now there it is right there. You've got USA, Japan, Europe, and Europe. I'm going to go ahead and pick USA and go ahead and next. Now, you can go ahead right here and look. We'll scan and identify games for selected directories below. So I will go ahead and add a folder. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and just go back to Downloads, PlayStation 2. And I'll want to pick Downloads and PlayStation 2. Choose. Would you like to scan it? Yes, I would. And there's the directory right there. So let's go ahead and go next. And right here, controller type, not connected. DualShock 2, guitar. I'm going to go ahead and go DualShock, controller map to default. You can go ahead and do automatic mapping up here if you want. Keyboard, mouse, or Microsoft Xbox One controller, which I'm using. And we will go ahead and click next. And it says you are now ready to run games. Go ahead and click finish. And there it is right there. And the game that I have for it to play is Need for Speed. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it. Go ahead and full screen it. And there comes Need for Speed. Now you can go up here if you want to and change a few things around. Adjust things. Change your settings on it. I do have audio muted for the simple fact that I don't want to get any copyright strikes. Hi, I'm Brooke Burke. So what we're going to go ahead and do right now is I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and just close it out. And are you sure you want to shut down the virtual? Yes, I'm sure. And that, my friends, is how to run PS2 games on Linux. Simple, easy, and concise.
doesn't take much work at all. Okay, the next emulator I want to cover is the Wii. Um, there's still a lot of Wii games out there that people play. And if you stay right here in Garuda Gamer Emulators, go right up here, Dolphin EMU. Go ahead and click on it and apply. Go ahead and put your password in. Let's go ahead and open that up. It'll do all the installing for you. Press enter to exit. It's as simple as that. Go up here. Go to Dolphin. And there's Dolphin Emulator. Let's go ahead and open that up. Sure, go ahead. Now, first thing you want to do here is go to controllers. Because right now, we're going to emulate the Wii's Bluetooth adapter. Now, I do want to say this. You can use a Wiimote with this game. All you have to do is get a Wiimote and sync it on Bluetooth, and then you could actually use an actual Wiimote. What I'm going to do, I'm going to have fun and do it with a Xbox controller. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and it says enabled your emulated Wii remote. Let's go ahead and go to configure. Go up here, and there's my Microsoft Xbox One pad. Let's go ahead and pick it up. I want to drag this over because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to open up this window, and we're going to look for a Wii Wiimote. And there it is right there. Because what I want to do is go ahead and open that picture and help me cheat a little bit. Shows me the buttons and all that good stuff. So I want to go ahead and minimize that just a little bit. Matter of fact, I don't want an Amazon ad. I want just an image of a Wiimote. So let's go to images. Okay, let's open that up. Will that give us just an image? No, that's somebody trying to sell it too. Let's go down here. Let's go right there. Let's open that image in a new window. There's the image. Can we make it bigger? Let's go ahead and bunch that up. You got your A button, you got your D-pad. One and two. Uh, most games, that's run and fire. You've got the negative. Okay, so let's go ahead and minimize that a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is look at these buttons right here. And I'm going to come over here. The A button is the big button on there. So I'm going to go ahead and make that my big X button. Now the B button is your trigger. So let's go ahead and click on that. Make sure that picked. Yes, it did. Now the 1 and 2 button, I'm going to make A and B. And then the negative, I'm going to make that my select button. That button. And my home button... I'm actually going to use as that. Now on the D-pad, I'm going to go up, down, left, right. Now one thing you're going to worry about, you got motion simulation on here. Now on the Wiimote, if you shake it, it would usually do things. Like right here it says shake. So all I'm going to do is make that the Y button. So whatever it happens, I just hit the Y button and it's going to simulate me shaking the remote so what i want to do is go up here and put test because that's my test and i want to save it then i'm going to load it back up and then i want to go ahead and close out of that and we will go ahead and close out of that and then what i want to do over here is open let's go to downloads where's my wii there's my wii super mario let's open it there we go all right, that made all the difference in the world.
Yes, I want to stop that emulation. Let's close. Close that. And I'm going to close out of this now because we're going to move on to what you all have probably been waiting for, which is Windows Gaming on Linux. Now, I'm going to restate what I have already stated is that if you're using any game that has to have anti-cheat, which is Battle.i, EAC, whatever, if it's multiplayer with anti-cheat, this isn't going to work. It will work. I know people that have got it up and running, but they've been banned on accounts just because you're running it on something other than Windows, and they automatically think you're cheating. Even though the game servers are on Linux, you're playing the game on Linux, they don't like it too much. So, first thing you want to do is figure out what games you're playing on Windows that you want to play on Linux. And then you're going to go over to ProtonDB. Let's say, let's go there. There's ProtonDB. Let's uh, go over here, search games. All you got to do on there is just put in the game that you're playing. Like me, Metal Gear Solid 5. There it is. There's Metal Gear Solid 5. That's the one I'm talking about. They do have ground zeros. It's rated gold. It's playable. And it tells you down here that you may have to tinker with it a little bit. But this is where you're generally going to go to look up games and see if you can play them on here. Uh, Cyberpunk. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Gold rating. And you'll get hints on here. If you have trouble getting the game up and running, you're going to get hints. And you can go through here and it'll tell you this guy's using an AMD. This is you guy's using an AMD. This guy's using an NVIDIA. But ProtonDB is priceless. You can go over here, put in whatever game you're inquiring about, and it'll be more than happy to tell you, hey, uh, Payday 2 is native, Grand Theft Auto 5 is gold, Dota, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, Battle Eye. It's an anti-cheat. Uh, Rust is bronze rated, but it has EAC, and if you play Rust, you might get kicked or banned. Uh, Left 4 Dead, Fallout 4. So there's lists of games on here already, but you can go do a search. So what I'm going to do real quick is go ahead and close out of this, and we're going to go open up Steam and let it get booted up. Now, one of the things uh, I'm going to point out to you is your Steam library will pop up uh, when you get it set up. Let's go ahead and make that full screen. Let's get it loaded up. There's my library. Let's go to the store. There's your store right there. Now, your library, when you first open it up, this won't show an arrow. Okay? What it'll show is not compatible or a Windows logo. Now, what you're going to have to do is go over here to Steam. Go to Settings. First thing you want to do is come down to Compatibility. Right here, Enable Steam Play for Supported Titles. Click that on. Enable Steam Play for all other titles. Click that on. Now, once you've done that, you're going to want to set up a controller. If you want to use a controller, if you want to, if you do, you're going to come over here and set up for a PlayStation controller or an Xbox controller. You just click that on, off, and then that way you've got controllers set up for yourself. Now, once you get done doing that, your library will pop back up and it'll say install. So you just install your game. Once it's installed, you can come over here, like with Metal Gear Solid 5 that I'm showing you right here. Just click play, and it'll load itself. So we'll go ahead and let it do that. Sometimes uh, there is a download going on in the background, so there must be an update or something going on. Uh, 69%, 72. Let it do its thing here, 82%. 99 and it updates download three or three items that's finished so we'll let it finish loading up and i'm going to show you this is really awesome launching metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain it's processing the vulcan shaders And there it seems to be this game has an autosave feature. Let's go ahead and click OK. It's going to log me into my server. Let's make sure the audio is still working. And the audio is working.
And it should bring me up to a start screen so that I can start the game. That's probably going to be a little loud, so I'm going to turn that down for y'all. And there we go. Plus the enter key. Well, I'm not pressing the enter key. I'm going to go ahead and hit a button on my controller. And we're going to continue. And it's going to bring me right back where I was uh, in the game, where I left off, whether I was playing it on Windows or whether I was playing it on my Linux system. It's that simple, guys. It's really that simple. And here we go. I'm out with my dog. Let's pet my dog. And I can go to play in my game. And it doesn't play any different. As a matter of fact, it may play a little smoother than when I played it on my Windows PC, actually. Uh, but it's easy to set up. Steam is easy to set up. If you're not using anti-cheat, this is going to be a dream for you. Yeah. Especially if you're somebody that likes gaming and loves Linux. It's going to just make things easy. And you'll be able to do and play whatever games you want. And still enjoy your time. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and back out of this real quick. Plant expansion. And we will go to return the title menu. Yes. And then we are going to uh, go back to our main screen. Now, I do want to remind you. This video has been sponsored by Tuxedo Computers. Now, I've been talking through the whole video about a surprise that Tuxedo Computers and EBA Central has for those of you watching this video at the present. Now, what that is, is real simple. If you like this video and comment this video, that makes it possible for you to get this computer that I just did all these tests on. And I'm going to go ahead and pull this back up again. Let's go ahead and show you what we're doing. We're doing it on a Tuxedo Polaris AMD Gen 4 15-inch monitor. Uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060. 32 gigabytes of RAM. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the settings. And we'll go to display. And we'll bring up the display. And you're coming with a 2560 by 1440 display. This laptop is just awesome. I have thrown everything at it. Uh, the fans do kick on every now and then, but they kick on, cool it off, and then they go silent for 20, 30 minutes. It runs smooth. Anything I've thrown at it, it runs. Uh, but that's it. You want a shot at getting this laptop? All you got to do is like and comment on the video. It's that simple. Tuxedo is really happy about this collaboration, which I am too. Uh, I love Tuxedo laptops. That's all I'm using at the moment. I'm um, doing my video on this one right here that we're talking about. And then the one that's in my bag that I carry on a daily basis, which is the uh, Pulse 15. Hopefully I answered a lot of questions you guys had about gaming on Linux. But like I said, if there's another emulator you would like me to go over, hey, drop that in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to do a video on it. But gaming on Linux is not what it used to be. It's easier now. If you're not playing multiplayers that require anti-cheat, you can pretty much run anything you throw at it. You can run emulators on it. You can download native Linux games. The lists go on and on. It's not that hard anymore. Guys, thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to like and comment because I really want to see one of you guys get this laptop. I think it's going to be really awesome and you will be really, really pleased. If you liked the video, please let me know in the comments below. And if there's something that you didn't like in the video, let me know that too. I love feedback. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.